In this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy your app to the Google Play Store. So I've got my Parks of Mars app right here, and you wanna go into your settings and come down here to mobile deployment. So here's the deployment to App Store, that's the Apple App Store. So we're just gonna close that up here because we're gonna focus down here in the Google Play Store. Now, when you're all ready to deploy, all you need to do is smash this button right here. But there's two things we need to do before we push that button. First, we need to set up our app in the Google Play Store. And second, we need to connect Flutterflow to our Google Play Store. Okay, so step one, setting up our app in the Google Play Store. Now, there's one prerequisite for this, and that's that you have to have a Google developer account. And you can do that by going to this URL. It does cost $25, but then you have that account for life. Okay, so after that's done, you can go to the Google Play console here. Okay, so now we have to create our app, but you might be thinking, wait, I thought I created my app in Flutterflow. Yes, that's true. I'm just using shorthand here. What you need in the Play Console is basically a shell for your app that has some configuration that then Flutterflow will dump the app, the app bundle into. So we're doing that configuration right here. So you wanna come up here and create an app and give it an app name. So Parks of Mars, language, whether it's an app or a game, whether it's paid or free and just accept these terms. Great, let's create our app. Okay, awesome, it's created. Now, this was confusing to me, but if you look on the left side, it might look similar to the last screen we react, but we're actually inside the app. So if you go back to all your apps, here's all the settings for your Google Play Console account, and then down here is where all your apps are. And when you click in them, we're now inside our app. Okay, awesome. The next step is to do a bunch of configuration for your app, and you can just scroll down here to set up your app and look at all the tasks you have to accomplish. I'm not gonna go through these now because they're very easy easy and they're gonna be specific to your app. But you don't actually have to do all of these before we dump your app in here from Flutterflow. And that process of dumping, of sending it over here, will normally take a few minutes and it'll take a little bit longer the first time you do it. So let's actually do that first. So while you're waiting, you can do these things. So that first step is done. Well, we're just gonna put this stuff off for later. Setting up your app in the Google Play Console. The next step is to connect Flutterflow to this account so you can send your app in here. And we'll do that through Google Cloud Platform. So if you don't have an account, sign up for it now and then we'll jump in there. All right, so I'm in a new project in Google Cloud Platform, and I need to do two things. And let me give you the big picture of what needs to happen here. First, we need to enable access to the Google Play Console API. Then we need to create an account that's allowed to use that API. Now, this account is not gonna be a human, it's for a computer. This will be the account that Flutterflow uses to send our app from Flutterflow into the Google Play Console. So you can just search for Google Play Android, and this is what you want, the Google Play Android Developer API and enable that service. Beautiful. Next, we need to create credentials. That is, so our user, so Flutterflow, is authorized to use this. And the only thing you need to select here is that it's accessing application data, not user data. Next, here we're creating that account, that service account. And like we said before, a service account in the Google Cloud platform is just a special non-human account that applications use to securely interact and access cloud resources like the Google Play Console API. And we'll just call it Parks of Mars. It'll auto-generate the email address for that account. And you can put a description if you want. Create Next, we need to give it a role, and this is gonna be service account user. Great, and continue, and you can leave those blank for now, and done. Next, we wanna go into that account, so you can just search for service accounts, and that's the account we just created, and we need to make keys for this account to give to Flutterflow so that it's authorized to make the requests. So you can come into Actions and Manage Keys, and come over to Add a Key, Create a New Key, and we want JSON. This will download the key to your computer, so you can just close that, and now let's jump back over to Flutterflow to upload this key. So here's our service account credentials, and you can just upload that file you just downloaded. Beautiful. Next, we need to give that service account we created to our Google Play account in the Google Play console. So back in Google Cloud Platform here, you can just click on service accounts, and you can just hover over this email address and copy it. So we're back here in the Google Play console, and you want to come out of this app right here and go in here to users and permissions. You want to invite a new user, and you can paste in that service account email address. We just set up and come down to app permissions and we want to select which app 
this account has access to, and it's the one we just created here, and apply. Next, you want to add in here, edit and delete draft apps, and all of these release options, and the store and user feedback, and apply. And finally, don't forget this button at the bottom right here to invite the user, send invite. All right, so everything's connected, so we can jump back into Flutterflow now. So next, we wanna select a Google Play track to deploy this on. And we've got four different options. The first three of these are for testing, and the last production is when you're actually going to launch your app to the public. Now, where are these tracks in the Google Play console? Well, let me show you that. Those are in this testing dropdown right here. So open is beta, closed is alpha, and internal is internal. Okay, so what's the difference between these three? Well, there are a few differences. Now, there's two things to keep in mind with these options. First is that there's an order from more early to the testing phase to getting closer to production. That is internal is the earliest and then to closed, open, open, and then production. Second, these aren't required. So you can choose to deploy your app to just one or all of these or none of them and go straight to production. These are just options available to you. Okay, so what are the differences? First, number of testers. So the internal track has a maximum of 100 testers and the other ones have no limit. Next is the availability of it. So for internal and closed alpha, people get access to your app through email. When you're in open beta, it'll be accessible on the Play Store. That is anyone. Next, review. So for internal and open beta, there's no review by Google, but there is with closed alpha. And finally, payment. So if this is a paid app, your closed alpha and open beta group will have to pay to use the app, but not for internal. So let's just start out with internal for now. And we're ready to smash that button except we get this error because we haven't set an icon. So make sure you do that. And you can do that in app assets over here. All right, so let's set a launcher icon. Beautiful, now we're ready. So let's go back over to mobile deployment and we can smash that button, deploy. All right, great, it's successfully submitted. Now that doesn't mean it's there yet because it'll take a little bit for Flutterflow to generate the binaries, the code for the play console. So you can check the build status to see where you're at. Right now, it's queued. And now would be a good time. Now, this can take 20 or 30 minutes for the first time, so now would be a great time to go fill out the rest of that information about your app. And it failed, but that's actually a good thing because for the first time you deploy, you actually have to upload your app bundle, this AAB file yourself, and I'll show you how to do that. So just click to download and let's jump over into the console. So we were still in users, so you can just come back to all apps right here and go into your app. Now we wanted to deploy on our internal track, so you wanna go to internal right here and create a new release. Now, first we have to choose a signing key, which you can just use a Google generated key, and then you can upload that AAB file. Okay, beautiful, it's been uploaded. We can see the version there, the first one. And if you wanna give it a release name or release notes, you can do that there and go next and save. All right, so we uploaded it for the first time. So now let's deploy it again. It's submitted and let's check our build status and it's queued up. Okay, let's just wait a few minutes. Wait, and we failed again. Why is that? We can click on here and see. And the error is because only releases with a status of draft may be created on the draft app, but that's okay. You can just come down here to advanced settings and select this submit as draft. That's what this is for. And then just deploy again. Beautiful, and it finished successfully this time. Let's go take a look at it in the Play Console. So this was our first release, and if we just refresh, boom, there we see our second one. Next, if you wanna add testers for this app, you can come in here to your testers. These are lists that are auto-generated for you, and you can take a look at them and add more in here if you want. Then you can just create an email list off of it, and if you send them this link, they'll be able to access your app. Finally, how do we actually send this app into production? Well, there's two ways. First, you can promote a release you've already made, you can come here to promote release and I can promote it to production. This will bring me into my production track where you're creating a production release. So you would just come in here and fill out whatever information you want and then go next. Now I'm getting these areas because I haven't filled out the information in the beginning, if you remember 
here to set up your app. So make sure you do that. The other way you can do it is the way that we did it in the beginning with the internal testing. So we go into Flutter Flow and we deploy from a production track, it will fail. And then we download that AAB file, create a production release, and then upload it there. It works the same way. And once you have that and filled out all the information, you're ready to publish. And that's how to deploy your app to the Google Play Store.